is the Always More Podcast. Hello and hello. It is September 6th and welcome to the Always More Podcast, where we believe there's always more room at the table for honest questions, meaningful conversations, and deeper understanding. Today on the pod, we're talking about pirates, World War II, autumnal women, our favorite animals, and much, much, much more. But first, I'm your hostess with the mostess, Chris Ford. Sitting next to me is my best friend in the entire world, Tim Lichty. Hello, hello. And across from us in the internet lands of Kansas, we have Harley the Bean Bianco. <laughs> What's up, guys? Hey, everybody. Howdy. I missed you guys. It's been like Howdy. two Miss weeks. You guys. I know. It's like two weeks to the day. I feel like we only get together like... Every other Wednesday. Hey, but you know what? This is like the oh, most that yeah. I talk to anyone. Like, like literally <laughs> Outside anyone. Outside of my wife and my kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's you guys and them. I guess work, but that's a little different. Work I, doesn't count. I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't. You don't have friends. I don't work. always enjoy talking to people. You don't have friends I'm at work. Kidding, you I'm have kidding. workplace proximity associates. If you're a work friend, I love you dearly and you're great. Okay. But you're not actually friends. You're workplace proximity associates. Sure. You guys would not be friends if it were not for the workplace. Sure, but that can turn into something else. It can, but it doesn't always. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm mostly friends with all my Go ahead and employees. quit your job tomorrow, and let's see how many people you talk to in a week. That's a good point. There's one guy that I might still talk to. Who is it? His name is Alex. Oh. He's a cool guy. Right. So now everybody at your job knows that Alex is your favorite. That's not what I said. <laughs> it basically is. <laughs> How did you do this? <laughs> Entrapment. You're a father. You know you're not supposed to play favorites. I don't dance, have favorites. Puppets, dance. <laughs> I'm not saying he's the best no, there. You or are anything supposed like that. to have favorites as a father. It just it changes from time to time. Like you're my favorite kid today. Your sibling might be my favorite kid tomorrow. That's Depends true. Depends on how you I guys think act. That's how trauma starts. <laughs> <laughs> Look, that's what happened to me when I was a co. <laughs> oh, that explains a lot. <laughs> Anyways, let's go ahead clicking. and uh, let's go ahead and dive in to our pod episode, and we're going to start today's episode with our usual, our favorite, Wreck and Rev. It's part of the show where we recommend and review some things you may or may not have seen, read, or heard, or tasted in some cases, smelled in one case. I think we did a candle episode. <laughs> mm. I don't remember. Doesn't really matter. Sense. If we haven't, we will soon. Harley, what do you got for us? Mine is something that probably a lot of people have heard of, actually. Um, do tell. And it was the first thing that came to the top of my head because I can't think of a single other thing that I've like watched or done recently. And it's Gilmore Girls. <laughs> Gilmore Girls. <laughs> hey, look, the, I got I got trapped in this show a long time ago. It's it's something else. Not to be confused yeah. with the Golden Girls. No. Right. Absolutely not. This is about a once teen mom who is now an adult raising her teen daughter. And it's a fiasco. It absolutely is. That's for sure. So I'm I'm still only in the first season. But oh, you're just very, now starting it? Yeah. Like this just show starting. Oh. Hella old, Harley. I think it's wow. older than you are. <laughs> no, it started when I was birthed. Okay. <laughs> Same year. Which means it was in pre production before right. you were born. But that means when I was alive, it still existed. Oh, hey, my iPad's coming on. The, the, iPad. Are you going to talk about it? The show? Um, I mean, it's it. <laughs> what do you want me to say? Or what I, do well, you I, want I, to hold say? Hold on, hold on. I know that there is a, a person named Rory in the show. Yes. Yeah, that's a daughter. And I know that Alexis Bledel is in the show. Yeah, yes. that's the same character. Okay. Same person. I didn't know that was the same person. Yeah. yeah. And that's all I know. Oh, and mm -hmm. there's there's a construction worker, handyman, something or other that somebody Luke. falls in love with. Yeah, Luke. Yeah. Is that know. the the restaurant dude? Yes. Oh, he, restaurant dude. He's a restaurant here. Yeah. He owns a at, restaurant. In the or he works at the restaurant. He is. How, how, are I think you he like, works there. You say you're still working in the first season. How far along are you? I don't know. Probably like five episodes okay, deep. Okay, you barely. Oh, so you don't know it. that Rory gets pregnant? Yeah. I'm the just making, I'm making stuff up. I don't know. <laughs> I've never watched that show. I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't I know. doubt it, though. That okay. seems like something they would do. There is a character on this show. His name is uh, Kirk. And have, I'm, you, I'm, you, are you aware of this person, Harley? 
I don't know yet. I'm a little more concerned. I'm to the part where she's like (laughs) started at the new school. Okay. So Kirk is, he's like the skinny guy. He's got like, he talks this weird way and he like has all these different odd jobs. Like throughout the seasons, he's just one of those guys that lives in this small town, but he like has all these random different jobs. He's like, what do you actually even do kind of thing? But he is Sean Gunn, James Gunn's brother. Oh. And he's the guy who plays, um, what's his face in Guardians of the Galaxy? Uh, um, the, the guy who, in, uh, who inherits like. Oh. Um, the guy with the fin. Yeah, yeah. Not not the first one. Not uh, um, Ron, Ron. Not did? Yondu. Not Yondu. The other one. Yeah, yeah the one inherits it. His, his partner. Uh, but yeah, hilarious character. Hilarious character. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I've met him yet. Maybe not. Maybe I have, actually. You probably Does he work a lot well with, um, what's her name, Suki? Suki, yeah. Do Wait, they, what? like, work together no, a no, lot? No, no. Okay, well, so that's not so. the dude that she's, like, chasing, or is that, like, her lover or something? I don't remember, to be honest. Nah, I don't know. But basically, what I've gathered about the show so far is it's in the beginning, and I know, I don't know a lot towards the end, but I know that it gets very, very dramatic towards the end of, like, you know, the seasons and whatever. But sure. I know the mom in the beginning very immature but that's because she was a teen mom who you know is the you know, raised a daughter yeah she absolutely and now her, has trauma <laughs> like for sure um don't we all have a little bit of trauma yeah you, you meet her parents some You'll of see us what I'm more about. than others and then her daughter is the age almost roughly <laughs> in this time period in which she her mother lorelei like got pregnant with her and that stuff was and like had name. to raise her it, it yeah, got close Lorelei. to it. I think I think Rory, she it's a, she's like, like I think middle school in the first season. Or maybe she's high school. Like she's freshman. high school. Yeah, I think Yeah, like, she's like a started. freshman. Yeah. But she like was Dang, so, is so responsible in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Like she has to take on all of these like that active adult roles. Yes. And I'm pretty sure towards the end she, is when she starts to like not like lash out, but just starts to become very immature. And she makes the stupidest decisions. I will tell you yeah. right now, Rory and Lorelai will not be your favorite characters. They're just the worst. They make the stupidest, worst human decisions mm-hmm. I've ever seen on reality t- or not reality, but just TV in general. You will enjoy other characters and you will enjoy it because of the people that they're around. But like very quickly within like the second season, you're like, oh, this person is making horrible life decisions. Oh, they uh-huh. suck. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're horrible. I would not want to be their friend. Yeah. Fair I enough. do love the vibes, though. Their yeah. fall vibes. It's quick wit. It's very nice. Yeah. What? It's quick witted humor. Very much so. Like their back oh. and forths. I, I know For that sure. their back and forths are like bickery and quick witted. Tit for tat. Yes. They're more like friends than mother and daughter, which I think is where their biggest problem comes in. It it works, but like you you'll definitely get into parts of this show where you're like, yeah, Rory doesn't know how to, to differentiate between being the mom and being the friend, and then also vice versa. It's just it's complicated. It's complicated. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's mine. All right. If you haven't started watching it, maybe <laughs> attempt it. I would prefer to watch this over Grey's Anatomy any day. I don't think I, I could mentally I handle Grey's Anatomy ever. Shows. I would agree with you on that, Harley. Like, as much as I probably don't want to watch Gilmore Girls again, I would, if I was forced to, Gilmore. Just mm-hmm. because of Kirk. I'll give it to Kirk. He's a filmmaker. Woo, Kirk. All right. Good for him. All okay, right. Who's next? Uh, it's me. So, uh, Hereditary. Haven't seen that. Oh. Are like you horror? serious? You guys like horror films? No. No, I don't like horror films, but I've been told every single fact about this film. You no, know really? I don't like horror films. I know you don't. Okay, look, I don't usually I like horror. Films. I like like well made. And you thought this was a good one? Yes. You didn't like Well, you haven't watched it. <laughs> what? I don't need to watch it in order to know that it's insane. Yeah, absolutely. But look, I like well thought out movies and this this, okay, look, here's, here's the description. When Ellen, the matriarch of the Graham family, passes away, her daughter's family begins to unravel cryptic and increasingly terrifying secrets about their ancestry. Starring Tony Coletti. Coletti? I guess you know that's Italian. Alex Wolf, Millie Shapiro, and Gabriel Byrne. Directed by 
Ari Aster. He is phenomenal. He did Midsummer. He did Bo is Afraid, uh, The Strange Thing About the Johnsons. He makes a really well thought out film, which is why. So I no re- wonder why the, it's insane. Oh yeah, it's it's horrible. Like like the there's a part like in the first quarter of it, you're like, oh my god, what just happened? I, I, the first five minutes is what I hear. First five minutes, everything's downhill. <laughs> I've not heard anything about this film, nor do I want to watch it. So, it's it's a it's a dark film. It, it is, and that's what I look. If I'm going to watch a horror film, I don't want to watch cheap, like scares. I want something that's going to make me think and make me go, "Oh, that's really dark," and there's a good reason for it. Make you ponder its actuality and existence. Yes, Midsummer did that as well. Is it's like well, that's because that was like a cult film. Sure, but it makes you think about it. I actually like, wanted to yeah. watch Midsummer. I still haven't. It it makes you think, and it makes you really kind of wonder about other like cultic experiences and things like that. It really kind of brings out like this other you know you know mindly experience. And 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 higher and excuse me, Hereditary does the same thing, but in a different way that I don't want to spoil for you. You know, I was in a cult once. I know you were. <laughs> 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 all right, that's all I got though. Hereditary, go check it out. It's nice. All if right. you like horror. I hear. It's it, everybody who's probably watched that film has come out just damaged. Different. Didn't you watch Midsummer yeah. with us? No, I watched. Um, I wasn't invited it? to that. Oh, eh, it's not the same. See, so yeah, like it, I could care. I couldn't care less for it. Was funny. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> but no, genuinely, like that one wasn't. But I also watched it with people. I can't just yeah. mentally do horror films they will it's because i have anxiety and i just think and think and think and think about the same thing so yeah i'll mess with ghosts of demons anyway mine (laughs) on a much lighter note (laughs) is the live action adaptation of one piece oh yeah do tell you liked it i'm not i haven't watched it it. i'm not done okay i'm like five or six episodes in um, so, based on Ichiro Oda's world-renowned manga and anime, the Netflix adaptation is a faster-paced live-action version of the story of the Straw Hat Pirates and their captain, Monkey D. Luffy's journey to becoming the King of the Pirates. Oh. I wrote that oh. review. Oh, nice. I should submit huh. it somewhere. Um, yeah, watch. so, I mean, it, it's it's got great casting. It's weirdly accurate with its costuming. Uh, locations are really cool. Pretty good CGI. And it's... Honestly, good pacing because the anime has literally 1,100 episodes. Oh. And I can't sit through a live action of 1,100 episodes <laughs> of a show that I've already watched. Yeah, that's a good point. 1,100 episodes of. So, <laughs> yeah, pretty good pacing. Um, it, it's probably one of the best anime adaptations I've ever seen for live action. Uh, oh. Which, I mean, comparing it to other live action anime adaptations, you know, it's... Avatar, we're looking at you. It's not hard to beat. <laughs> Avatar, <laughs> Dragon Ball Z, um, Bleach. Oh, yeah. Bleach had one. Death Note oh. had one. Willem Dafoe was in Death Note. Willem. No way. No. Yeah, he was the Shinigami. Um, uh, his name That's wild. starts with an R, I think. It doesn't matter. That's not the one I'm talking about. This one has pretty good casting uh, because all of the anime characters of the main Straw Hat Pirates are based off of a country or like a race of people to be. So like Luffy dresses in sandals and shorts and a straw hat all the time. He's supposed to be based on Brazil. Oh, okay. And then Frankie is a giant cyborg with guns in his body, so obviously he's American. <laughs> Zoro oh, is a uh, samurai, so he's he's got three swords. He's a pirate hunter that uses swords, so he's from Japan. Right. All kinds of cool stuff like that. So this one, it's pretty good casting. Uh, they use the right racial people yeah. for their casting. And like I said, it, it's just a fun show to watch. I was watching it yesterday with my family and we were all just like on the on the edge of the couch. And not just like me and Janelle and Tyler. Like I'm talking like <laughs> my aunts and uncles and everybody. Oh. We were all like I, watching it together. I thought, you, I thought you were about to say your cats. <laughs> <laughs> well the cats too. The cat the cat was there. Uh, but we were all like on the edge of the couch like what's gonna happen? And now the whole thing on like episode four, spoiler alert, if you're not aware of One Piece, like the uh, the vice admiral of the Marines is the pirate guy, like the main pirate captain's grandfather. 
So at the end of the episode, like he's looking through his little periscope and he's like, grandpa. And my whole family's like, what? And I'm like, oh, I didn't know. How crazy. I'm such a surprise person right now. But no, it, 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 like I said, it's a pretty good anime adaptation. I like it. I'm going to finish it. It's not like one of those where you watch it and you're like, oh, this is dumb and you have to walk away from it. I like mm. it. It's good. Good stuff. Nice. Yeah. So that's all of my Wreck and Ref. 12 out of 10. I wouldn't say that, but you know. I meant seven, your seven review of, of it. Oh, my review of it. Thank you. Yeah, I got You're a 12 welcome. out of 10 review Probably for my so. 7 out of 10 show. All right. We'll move on to the next segment, which is Don't Get Me Started. Hey. I feel like that's from like a hardware store commercial. It sounds just like it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Home Depot or whatever. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So this is a part of the show where we rant about something that probably doesn't deserve a rant. Tim is going to help us pick some random words and we're going to rant about them. I think this time Tim should go first, though. Okay. Well, you stop it then when you see All the word right. that you I'm, want I'm to do. I'm not even going to see a word. Just keep well, clicking. Well, you want me to I'll, do it first, well, right? Yes, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say stop, and then I'll look at the word and I'll decide if that's good. Okay, stop. Yeah, no, that one actually deserves a, a rant. <laughs> that one deserves it. Go again. Stop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah I can do this. Rant about that. <laughs> Let's hear it. Let's see what you got. All right. The word. Oh, we got a minute, minute and a half, something like that. One minute. All right. Tim's word is. Mathematics. Look, guys, let's talk about this. <laughs> mathematics is stupid. You don't have to say anything. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> guys, look, who who really, there's no one that likes math. Like, people say they like math, but they just like the end results of math. People that are in finances, they don't care about the math. They care about the money. People that are, like, 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 like engineers and stuff, they don't care about the math. They care about the bridge that they just built. So math is just dumb. Do we need it? Sure, maybe. But is it still dumb? Yes, because it requires complex thinking and requires you have to write things on pieces of paper. And don't get me started on when letters get involved. What the actual fuck? Like, what? Like that th totally threw me a loop in freshman year. Like, why do we need that? It's stupid. It's dumb. History is the way to go. That's all I got to say. Not quite a minute, but I'll give it to you. I mean, it doesn't deserve a minute. Dang. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Well, there you go. Mathematics. <laughs> nice. Mathematimax. For the record, I like math. I really don't, I'm, actually, so that was, that like was true. <laughs> All right, Harley, you're up next. And stop. Now, keep eh, going. I don't like that word. Stop. No. no. That deserves a rant. Stop. <laughs> no. no. Come on, man. Find nouns. Cover can you your just, eyes like, again. Can you just select nouns? I thought I could, but look. look it's, it's, literally, on nouns. it's literally yeah. on nouns. And Those it's aren't all nouns. Th Maybe oh. they are nouns and you just don't know. Oh my god, my eyes twitching. No, I'm so stressed. Not. Some of them are adjectives. Well, hopefully that other one could have been good. That one. Yeah. Yeah. That one. Yeah. Yeah. Harley, you have a minute no. to rant about staircases. Oh my god. <laughs> don't get me started on staircases. Let me tell y'all right now, in my job. The building in which I work, oh, this is a real one. we have, this is, a, this is a heartfelt one. It might be longer than a minute. <laughs> we have two elevators, okay, on this side of the building. And then we have a, I don't know how many, how many levels of stairs, like flights of stairs to get to the third floor. Okay. So two then. It's like, oh, let's see, one, two, three, four. It's like four and a half, five-ish. Because it's like those half stairwells. I think, Anyways, okay. I think that still me only counts as half. <laughs> let me continue. Regardless, it's a lot of god dang steps. <laughs> One of our elevators is down right now. The other day, the other elevator went out. Oh, no. <laughs> and so if you womp, womp. had to go to the third floor where the break room is, or if you worked up there, you had to take the stairs. <laughs> you don't get a choice. There, we have another elevator that patrons can use to get just to the second floor. But that doesn't go to the third floor. So regardless, you have to walk up all these goddamn steps. And, and they're concrete, concrete steps. So by the time you get to that goddamn third floor, you are so out of breath that you probably need to rip out your lungs, inhale them <laughs> like a paper bag, and then put them back in. It's just not going to happen. And I hate stairs. Do you know how many college campuses are just funded on stairs? 
funny. Just stairs. Texas State. <laughs> that's it. Just stairs. Concrete stairs. UT. Just stairs. <laughs> I'm that's, sick that's of it. True. It's very ableist, and I don't uh, want anything to do with it. Hey, all right. Get rid of stairs. Because oh. <laughs> once you get rid of stairs, then you make way for everybody else as well. Not just abled body people. All two, right. Two minutes on that one. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. I'm very passionate. Y- yeah. I see that. <laughs> Are they good for your health? Maybe. <laughs> Science is still up. Because, I mean, they help with your heart rate, but you could also fall and die. <laughs> and die. <laughs> My vote, uh, no. Uh, all right. I That's it. it. Thank like you for that Thank one. you. Thank you, Harley. I appreciated that. Um, well, fortune, that was an easy one for Chris. They're all easy for Chris. I'll tell you stop. Firefighters. Oh, okay. No. Actually, I don't like firefighters. I feel like that's too easy for Chris. All right. Stop. No, nope, that didn't work. What? Stop. Nope. I keep, Are you all these, joking? I keep being all these verbs. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Contractions. Contractions? Like the words? Yeah, I don't like that. Or like... Ovens. <laughs> Ovens. This is the word. Oven. Uh-uh. uh-uh. Nope. Not touching that one. Oh? Oh, oh. His oh. wife is a chef. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to find... Cataracts. It. I want to find it. Glaucoma. Cur- Curriculum. Gingivitis. Curriculum. Gingivitis. <laughs> <laughs> Gingivitis deserves a rant. Curriculums. This is your word. Curriculum. All right, look, don't get me started on curriculums, all right? When I was a kid, you would just go to school, and you would do what the teacher said, and then you would go home. That's it. Nobody ever told me that it was a curriculum. So when I had to go back to help the third grade class after graduating into fourth grade, and I realized they were learning the same exact things I did, I realized my education wasn't special. I realized that somebody else was planning what I was going to be learning. And that took all of the fun out of learning, knowing that somebody else sits down and says, this is what I want Chris to know. They're trying to hide things from me. I don't want a curriculum. I want to be able to learn at my own pace, learn the things that I want to learn about. Mm. Because you're telling me, oh, you need to learn that X plus Y equals Z, A squared plus B squared equals C squared, when really all I want to know is who actually built the pyramids. (laughs) Did you know that there was giant depictions of 15 foot tall people carrying those stones to build the pyramids i didn't know that but it's depicted in the in the what you call them the hieroglyphs they're 15 foot people i want to know how they got to be that big i want to know what happened to their bodies where are their bones these are the things i want to learn i don't care why the curtains were blue in huck finn's adventures to tom sawyer's house i don't care about that what i want to know is how to pay taxes I want to know how to run a government. I want to know how to ruin a government from the inside. <laughs> U.S. seems to be pretty good at those things. They seem to know. I bet nobody put the president on a curriculum. I want to know what's going on there. You don't get to tell me what I want to learn. I want to learn what I want to learn. Amen. <laughs> Guys, that was powerful. I didn't, I didn't realize I cared so much. <laughs> As you're hearing this, we are not recording video, but I might make a special exception and get this and put it somewhere on my background, like on my laptop or something. <laughs> Just put it in the TikTok. Put it on the algorithm. Bravo, good sir. Bravo. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I, I didn't realize I cared so much. <laughs> All right, guys, I think that's enough for our first segments. Uh, We are going to go on a short break where hopefully we can monetize something. (laughs) And uh, we'll be right back. Thank you all for listening to our podcast be sure to subscribe and leave a rating on your favorite podcast platform and youtube and don't forget to follow us on instagram tiktok and facebook at at always more pod if you'd like to ask us a question for us to answer on the pod you can email us at always more podcast at gmail.com or you can call us on our always more hotline and leave a voicemail question at 254-218-4042 You can also follow all of our social medias individually and as the Always More podcast. Thanks for listening. Let's get back to it. And we are back. 
Thanks for sticking with us, guys. I know it's been a long, hard road to get where we are, but now we're here. Who would have thought? Not me. Not me. Look Not at us. Me. <laughs> Look at us. Who would have thought? <laughs> who would? Who really would have thought Paul that Rudd. a simple little quote from Paul Rudd on a show about eating hot wings would have would have made such a popular little blast in the in the in the interwebs and in, in culture? I enjoy it. I would have thought. A reference. Who would have? Who would have thought? Harley would have thought. She knew. <laughs> she knew. knew. <laughs> I know. All right, guys. Everything. We're gonna get into our main segment today, which is animal fiasco. Fiasco. Uh, they're yes. not actually even fiascos, though. Some of them are pretty cool stories. Yeah. But I mean, it's a fiasco. Yeah. They're basically just fun stories about animals. A fiasco has <laughs> waves. It's ups and downs. Exciting and lows. But that's the that's what makes the exciting things exciting is you have to have a mountain to climb up. See, you're showing me, like, waves and mountains and valleys. Yeah. And when I think of fiasco, I think of, like, everything is fine. And then somebody just, like, chucks it at a wall. Yeah. Oh, I got some stories, though. I got some stories that feel like that. I feel like all of my life stories feel like that. I feel like your life is like that. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> All right, let's that's, go ahead that's and That's not even a joke. In. That's not even funny. That's just accurate. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started with our animal stories now. No more stories about Chris. Starting with Tim. Well, Jack the bear. Is that how you pr- pronounce that? I have no idea. I think it's Polish, so no. Okay, well, how would you pronounce it, Harley? Wojcik. Wojcik? Wojcik. Okay, well, Wojcik. I'm going <laughs> to... Oh, I want to butcher this. Uh, are you looking it up, Chris? Are you correcting me? I, no, I was just staring at the word trying to figure it out, but okay. now, I'm, now I'm going to. All right. Well, guys, here we go. This is the story of Wojcik the Bear. This is probably going to be our longest one. This is from Jennifer Murtoff at Brianica, excuse me, Britannica, uh, dot com. In 1942, the 22 Artillery Supply Company of the 2nd Corps of the Polish Army was— I, I told you. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> of the Polish army was sent to the Middle East to face the forces of Nazi Germany. Near the city of Harmadan, Iran, Iran. Names.com. That did not help us. Wojtek. <laughs> Wojtek. Wojtek. Oh. oh that's, that's right. The W is in there. Wojtek. 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 Okay. Um, it just sounds like the Zs or Js or some shit. <laughs> yeah. oh. Nobody knows. <laughs> Um, uh, in the city of Hamadan, Iran, uh, a young, is that Iran? Is that the pronounce? No, it's Iran. Yes. Iran? Iran. <laughs> okay, whatever. A young shepherd, correct me if I'm wrong, internet. A young shepherd traded a Syrian brown bear cub and a burlap sack to members of the company in exchange for a Swiss army knife, canned beef, and chocolate. What a trade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got this stuff in my pocket here. What do you got to trade for it? I don't know. I got a bear. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Easiest trade of my life. Uh, it's like so, the kid that gives you a, a, a Charizard and all you gave right. him was like a diglet. <laughs> oh, man. Um, all right. The soldiers adopted the cub whose mother likely had been killed by hunters. They fed him condensed milk from empty vodka bottles, uh, <laughs> honey, fruit, and marmalade. The bear, whom they named Voight. Vo- Wojtek. Wojtek, thank you. Short for, I'm going to try that, another Polish word for joyful warrior. Don't do it. We don't need it. Uh, it, uh, it came to trust his human companions. A soldier named Peter Pr- Prendis, Prendis became a Vortex, uh, Vortex excuse me, c- caretaker. Uh, Prendis taught the bear to salute, wave, and march, and Wojtek appeared to happily perform these duties. When not training, Wojtek amused himself with the soldiers in the camp by engaging in their activities, including wrestling and boxing. No. (laughs) No way in hell I would wrestle a bear. In addition to double rotations, the soldiers gave the bear treats, cigarettes, and beer. Guys... (laughs) It just made me think of that thing where he's like, if you ever see me fighting in the forest with a grizzly bear, help the bear. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? I've heard that before, yes. but I don't know what it's from. Uh, I don't know what it's from. Okay, yeah, we've all heard it. We're all on it. Okay, cool. Uh, despite his taste for beer, Boytek did not seem to become intoxicated. <laughs> Yeah, dude's got a crazy metabolism. As a part of a grenade, uh, excuse me, grenade practice, the soldiers lobbed, lobbed oranges, which Wojtek chased. 
Uh, he also enjoyed riding in trucks, at first in the, uh, the passenger seat when he was a cub, and then in the back seat when he grew larger. One of Wojtek's favorite activities was taking long, cold showers, and he eventually wow. learned to turn on the shower by himself. Nice. He's such a big boy. When shortages <laughs> resulted from the bear's... Uh, Profligate? Profligate? Yeah, I couldn't read it. I gotta, I, okay, you're going to laugh at Probably me. Probably like prolific. I got I to gotta increase Profiligate? the text here. Profligate? Um... Where I lost my place. Profligate. Oh, yeah. Use of water. His comrades forbade him to shower alone. Oh, he's using too much water. Nevertheless, one day, Wojtek is said to have found the door to the showers open and wandered inside when he encountered an Arab who had sneaked into the Polish camp to locate its weapons arsenal so that local uh, dissidents might later raid it. Jeez. Wojtek terrified the interloper, causing him to surrender to the Poles as a result, uh, as a re reward uh, Wojtek earned himself unlimited shower time and two bottles of beer. Good job, Wojtek. Oh, my God. <laughs> good boy. Could you imagine, like, <laughs> oh, I'm one man. I can sneak into this base, find the weapons, and then we can raid it later as a gr Oh, my <laughs> God. A bear. Is that a bear? <laughs> and Wojtek's like, oh, my God. Is that a person? <laughs> what are you doing in my shower? <laughs> <laughs> He's just trying to go shower. <laughs> He's like, oh, this is my chance. <laughs> you pass the soap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, where am I at? Um, in 1944, when the second, uh, excuse me, 22nd Artillery Supply Company prepared to ship out to join the Allied military campaign in Italy, it ran up against the rigid rigidity of military rules. Pets were banned in the army, and to stay with his unit, Wojtek needed to officially enlist. He was given the rank of private and a serial number, and he was permitted to remain with his fellow soldiers. Wojtek joking? <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> After all he's done, he's still just a private, <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, At least a colonel. <laughs> well, Wojtek's presence it boosted the morale of the troops and brightened their days. Moreover, beyond acting as a morale booster, he allegedly played a combat role during the Battle of Monte Cassino. Yeah, he would have to. <laughs> In May 1944, it is said that Wojtek, imitating his human companions, carried artillery shells and ammo crates between trucks and troops engaged in combat. In his Dude, honor, what? <laughs> in his honor, the company changed its insignia to a bear carrying an artillery shell. And for his service and bravery, Wojtek was eventually promoted to the rank of corporal. Oh, that's not quite. You know what's colonel, funny? <laughs> what is like literally? I feel like every single like army or military like logo or insignia is like an animal doing some crazy shit <laughs> this one with like happened. they're all based this on one reality. actually is based <laughs> off it <laughs> yeah like this one's real i love it i love history uh having provided himself to be a useful part of the unit the bear continued his antics including scaring swimmers in the adriatic sea and stalking horses and donkeys however because he had been raised by humans Wojtek did not really present a threat to people after the war ended, he and much of the rest of his unit were sent to a relocation camp in Scotland in 1946. At the camp, Wojtek was once again a source of joy for many people, and he enjoyed himself by partaking of two bottles of beer per day and unlimited... I mean, that's like maybe like a half a beer for us. Um, and oh. unlimited rations, as well as uh, by frolicking in the swimming pool built for him at the camp. In return... Oh. Wojtek helped his companions carry fence posts as they worked on a Scottish farm. Wow. Could you imagine the He's sheep? He's just a guy. <laughs> just a guy. Could you imagine He's the sheep? He's just some guy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, last little part here. As the troops began to demobilize, concerns arose regarding where Wojtek should be resettled. His comrades believed that because he had been cared for by humans since he was a cub, Wojtek might not survive in the wild. The soldiers did not wish to send Wojtek to Poland either because they feared he would be used for propaganda purposes by the communist authorities who had taken power in the country. Mm. In True. 1947, the bear was instead moved to the Edinburgh Zoo where he received many visitors over the years. When his former comrades visited the zoo, they brought, <laughs> they brought Wojtek beer, candy, and cigarettes and even wrestled with him. They just oh. let these dudes in? <laughs> I mean... I guess they knew where he came from. I mean, <laughs> That's my brother in war. <laughs> we fought together. <laughs> we served. Just like they just show up on like a random Tuesday though. I know. And the zoo's just like, yeah, go ahead in. It's like, hey kid, watch this. I'm gonna go fight this bear. 
<laughs> they probably did. Some little 10 year old is like, oh my God. Can you imagine like, they don't even tell anybody. They just go in and all the people just flip out. Yeah. <laughs> Bear starts like running to attack him, and they just like flip the bear over, put him in a full yeah. Nelson. <laughs> uh, all right, that's my first story. Wow. I guess I, like I will go next because Harley just has numbers next to hers. I have words; you, they're just not pasted sure? in here. Yes. All right, go for it, Harley. Yeah. All right, okay, and mine's super short, so oh, take enough. that. Okay, so my first one is a Newfoundland dog saved napoleon from drowning in 1815 what wow this better be in the yeah. movie <laughs> not that one. Oh, different napoleon, <laughs> different napoleon. Oh, well. in 1815 Ooh. napoleon bonaparte emperor of france was in exile on elba which is off the coast of italy are we not talking about the same guy i think you are the movie napoleon that's coming out there's, there's a, a napoleon movie coming out yes that's what i was Oh, I didn't know that. I thought we were talking about Ridley the other one. Ridley Scott, um, uh, uh, Walking Phoenix. He's playing Napoleon, and it's by Ridley Scott. Yes. All right, I gotta watch. Oh, this. I didn't know that. Well, I guess now we have more context. So, <laughs> or less. We context. are talking about the same guy. <laughs> I'm about to say, I Bonaparte. Yeah, that's kind of the one I know. <laughs> Is there any? Other I you one? meant like the other Napoleon one, like Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> vote for Pedro. <laughs> I was like, this is not the one I'm talking about right now. You right. think any fool wants a roundhouse kick to the face while I'm wearing these bad boys? Forget about it. All right, sorry to interrupt Harley. It's okay. I forgive, I guess. <laughs> but never forget. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay, anyways. So, he'd been sent there in 1814 as part of the Treaty of Fontaine, Fontainebleau. Fontainebleau. I can't sure. help you. You only put numbers. Sure. That's fine. Brokered with revolutionary France's many enemies. Uh, anyways, but he couldn't stay away from France for so long. So he escaped Elba within a year, as many of us know. Mm -hmm. um, and he's sailing over rough seas on the Inconstant, I think is the name of the ship. And Napoleon ended up falling overboard. Oh, no. Crazy. But luckily for him, a Newfoundland dog jumped in after him and saved his life the dog's intervention meant napoleon seized control of france once more <laughs> uh, again <laughs> albeit for a brief few months but um the defeat at waterloo that june is what forced his abdication yeah so so the dog only propo uh, postponed the inevitable correct right can, can, can you just like this guy literally conquered like a large part i mean all most of europe like the dude was a conqueror, and yet he goes overboard and he needs a dog to save him. Yeah, a Newfoundland. A Newfoundland dog. <laughs> you know, Monkey D. Luffy can't swim either, and he's king of the pirates. Mm. Oh wow! Yeah, that's I mean, a, yeah, that's, he, real, that's a real bad a look for him. Completely yeah. separate reason for it, but you know, yeah, it's kind of a problem though. I mean, pirate, kind of. So yeah. in in the One Piece world, if you eat a devil fruit, you get like superpowers, but you also lose the ability to swim. Oh well. That's so nice. like. <laughs> Half of the pirates he fights oh, is it worth can't it swim. That's why they're called devil fruits. Oh, okay. Uh, he didn't realize so it was wild. a devil fruit when he ate it. No. Oh. He just thought it was Tough. a fruit. Gotcha. Okay. So yeah, that was my number that was my number five on this list You're of like five. Yeah. <laughs> she I just has chose like two of them. Stories and she just picked her two No. Five. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually forty stories. Oh geez. And I just oh, picked God. two <laughs> <laughs> that I thought were pretty good. So right. yeah, that's that one. Napoleon was saved by Doge. That's kind of fun. All right. Well, mine is also about a hero dog and also about World War II. I can mine the best parts of your stories. Whoa. Uh, yeah. My, mine's like, that's the only part of my story. <laughs> <Good> hero <laughs> dog. dog. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about Smokey the Hero. Smokey the Hero. Guys, there are many Smokey stories of heroes. There are fewer stories of war heroes. Fewer still of war heroes who happen to be dogs, but there is only one Smokey. Mm. The bear. Not the bear. The dog. The dog. <laughs> Smokey was an obvious morale boost for the frontline soldiers as well as those in the hospital, and she is remembered as one of the first official therapy dogs. Oh, good it's a girl. She's most known for her active service during World War II. She was the pet of a Corporal Wine 
who trained her to run cables across active battlefields oh and through small pipes that were too dangerous or too small for humans. Though she was never an official war dog, she was extremely decorated. Smokey was credited with 12 combat missions and awarded eight battle stars. She survived 150 air raids on New Guinea, oh made it through a typhoon in Okinawa. Smokey even parachuted from 30 feet in the air <laughs> out of a tree using a parachute made just for her. Oh. Wine credited Smokey with saving his life by warning him of incoming shells on an LST transport ship, calling her an angel from a foxhole. As the ship deck was booming and vibrating from anti-aircraft gunnery, Smokey guided Wine to duck the fire that hit eight men standing next to oh, him. Oh, gosh. All of this is made even more impressive by the fact that she was a four-pound Yorkie. Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah. She's so little. Tiny. They used to carry her in a little backpack, and she would march along soldiers in a little... little oh, so she's feet. not like a, like a border collie? No, she is a four-pound Yorkie. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you imagine a rat dog, that's it. <laughs> I love Yorkies. Rat dogs. All of them. No, they're not rat dogs. They're very pretty dogs. My pretty cousin dogs. had a Yorkie at one point, and it only had one testicle. His name was Mikey. Well, well okay. <laughs> that happens, I guess. <laughs> after, Thanks, the war, after the war, Smokey took her talents to Hollywood to do live acts showcasing her talents to entertain the masses, like walking across a tightrope blindfolded. Hmm. She had all kinds of cool tricks that she had learned over she the years. She was literally like a... A woman of of many She's many like traits the and skills. Female dog version of Bob Hope. <laughs> <laughs> Lovingly, she was put to rest at the grand old age of fourteen, buried in a World War II thirty cal canister in Lakewood, Ohio. Wow. All right, then. dude. She did all of that in fourteen years. Fourteen years. <laughs> That's crazy. That's a lot more than I've done in my life. Yeah, right. <laughs> I feel kind of bad about myself, honestly. <laughs> Jesus. We need a war. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, no. It's, it's going to happen talking. anyway. Like, whether we want it to or not, it's going to happen. Might as well prep for it. Oh. Anyways, oh. what else we got, guys? Right, Somebody guys. else. <clears throat> I got a modern Thanks, story. Monkey. This happened just a few months ago. Hell oh. from the heavens is the name of this story. Hell from the heavens? Hell from the heavens. Oh. And this is from Doc La... Ooh, I'm not going to pronounce this correct. Lou Allen? Lou Allen? Uh, Jones, 64, said she was mowing her lawn with her tractor on July 25th uh, in Silver Texas. I know this one. Hey, let me just... Okay? All right, sorry. <laughs> she was mowing her lawn with... <laughs> you okay, Harley? <laughs> she... <laughs> Chris is always like, hmm, sounds familiar. Oh, I do know this. <laughs> I read about it on this, that, and the other. <laughs> Look, most people read books. I read articles on the internet, all right? I've probably read novels worth of articles on the internet. <laughs> I love this. Joan 64 says she was mowing her lawn with her tractor on July 25th in Selsby, Texas, which, fun fact, I used to live like 10 miles north of that, uh, near the Louisiana border, when a four-foot-long snake dropped out of the sky and landed on her arm. Quote, Dad. it wasn't until moments later I realized a hawk dropped the snake on me, she said. <laughs> As Jones shook her right arm to remove the snake, she said a hawk flew down to recapture his prey, stabbing Jones' right arm with its claws in the process. That's when she realized it was a hawk that dropped the snake. <laughs> <laughs> Jones, <Yeah. laughs> Jones said the hawk managed to get the snake off of her arm on the fourth try, and as painful as it was, it might have been a blessing. Quote, when I look back at it, the hawk was the reason why I was able to get the snake off my arm. The hawk was the reason the snake was there. <laughs> Literally. What do you mean? Joan said, quote, the snake was gripping my arm tight and hissing in my face. It's a four-foot snake. Like, I'm not saying they're, they can't be deadly snakes that are f- four feet long, but it's a four-foot snake. Like, you can rip that off. Like That's like comes up to my shoulders. Yeah, but you can Probably. rip that off. You, you, it's you, terrifying. You could, not if you're panicking. I'm not saying that it's impossible. Tim, imagine you're driving your tractor. You're just riding along the, the little <laughs> grass pathway you've created. And then all of a sudden, snake. 
Like you're not expecting I'm, that I'm, is I'm, the I'm, like, one of the last things you would be expecting. I'm saying yeah. the way the way she said that, it was like the only way for her to get the snake off of her was for the hawk that dropped it on her to take it back. Probably. Maybe. Nah, I don't think so. Anyways. Chris, this is also the same guy who likes to go stand outside when there's cops and murder being yeah. done yeah, down you're the street. Right. You're right. I can handle that. <laughs> He's got his gun. <laughs> Guys, I was like 20. Shut up. Jones's husband help? rushed her back to the emergency room where doctors stabilized her condition. She had deep wound cuts from the hawk and mild bruising from the snake. Mild bruising. <laughs> the hawk did more damage. <laughs> yes. It's been three weeks later. Oh, excuse me. Quote, it's been three weeks later and I still have nightmares from that day. I cried every time I told this story in the first two weeks after it happened, Jones said. The pain now is getting better, but the memory of that day isn't. <laughs> I would cry, too, <laughs> Joan, from laughter. <laughs> Joan said that she can't use her right arm after the incident. Her husband, children, and grandchildren assist her in daily tasks such as cooking, cleaning, and laundry and shopping. That's kind of sad. Bro, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> her biggest fear is one of her open wounds getting infected since she has artificial knees. Sure. She's old. Come Oops. on, man. <laughs> Last quote. It just keeps getting more. <laughs> I have to wrap, quote, I have to wrap my wound very well and be very cautious, she said. If my wounds get infected, it's a chance I would have to get new knees again since venom travels to the hey, weakest hey. part of your body, end quote. <laughs> that's not, that's not how that works. So Venom? I just, I do want to. <laughs> So there's another article I read for about this story that basically said like they actually did find like venom on her glasses and like like the splatter from it got onto her glasses. So like nothing got in her, but like it's crazy. Like it, it is a wild story. Like a snake falls on you and like you're driving yeah. a tractor. It's like what the hell is going on? I here? don't feel safe anywhere anymore. <laughs> I mean, and then a hawk. I mean, what do you do against a hawk? Like you try to punch it or oh, grab nothing. it. <laughs> There's nothing you can do against a hawk. Those things got razor sharp talons. Yes. Yeah. Crazy. I guess I do kind of be understanding her, <laughs> her point of view. I like the hawk. Absolutely. I get that. The snake, you know, that's fine. I think both right. are terrifying. <laughs> All right. That's me. Harley, it's you again. Okay. So, story number this one, two. Story number two. A pig killed King Philip of France, and his successor launched launched the disastrous Second Crusade. Good Lord. My God. <laughs> That's not at all how it happened in that show I watched. <laughs> what show? The the one about the Knights Templar. <laughs> oh, my God. Stop <laughs> talking. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's not how okay. it happened. King Philip, who ruled from 1116 to 1131, for some reason, my brain won't read that those years any other way, <laughs> but he ruled France with his father, Louis the Fat, from, so he's like 1081 to 1137. Uh -huh. Okay? Cool. Tracking. Like many teenagers, he refused to listen to his dad, or anyone else for that matter. He was actually really horrible. <laughs> I remember learning about this in my medieval renaissance class, but he was just horrible. He was horrible in so, the show, too. Oh, yeah, period. This is a good, good description. Um, one day, as he rode his horse along the river, I think it's pronounced Seine, Sign, who knows? In Paris, a little black pig ran out from a dung heap. Yeah. So he's, he's riding. That sounds about right, yeah. And then the pig goes, scurry. Yeah. Okay? Scurry. Philip's horse trips over this pig. Oh, no. And it crashes to the ground. Oh, no. <laughs> he just literally tripped. Oh, that poor done. horse. All right. Poor horse, for real. Then, Philip hits his head, and he never regains consciousness. Oh. And he kind of deserves it. <laughs> Louis the Seventh? Is it V11 is seven? Yes. yes. Louis the Seventh is seceded Philip and help helped launch the Second Crusade, in which many thousands of people died horribly. If only that ruddy pig, and this is a quote from the article, if only that ruddy pig had stayed put in the dung heap. Well, but I think it probably would have also been worse if he didn't become right. King. It might have been a bigger shit show. Yeah. <laughs> so 
I see what you did there. Uh, <laughs> that was good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not always great, but every <laughs> once in a while, a little gleam of, you know, brain cells are there. I have to, like, include the image that's <laughs> included on this article because it's like a like a tapestry painting of the situation in which his horse ran into this pig and <laughs> it's falling on the ground. There's a tapestry yeah. painting of it? It's like a painting, but it looks like it's like on a. I love that. Like the, I need to see it. The image in my head is like this horse like falls down. I'll just show you guys since we're not recording. And it's like squished up. Wait, how do I do this? Uh, that is the best. Wow. Wow. That is the best thing I've seen all day. Wow. Yeah. And I love that the pig is like more like a hog. Looks like a oh. wolf, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> Good lord, Harley. Sorry. It's a hog. (laughs) Hog. All right. Well, I guess. And then uh, he's just like upside down. I guess I'll go with my last one then. (laughs) We're done with that, Harley. (laughs) Moving on. (laughs) We're just running out of time. The Crusades. Um, So mine, my second one is also about a dog. I just really like dogs, okay? Dogs are nice. Dogs are nice. They're pretty cool. Especially this one. Have you heard of cats? I have. (laughs) Like I said, dogs are nice. Have you heard of hogs? <laughs> <laughs> They're like dogs, but more deadly. Or a bear. What about bears? <laughs> Never heard of bears. Anyway, oh. loyal dog springs owner from jail. What? One more time. Loyal dog springs owner from jail. That's a good dog. That's a great dog. Wow. I would hope my dog would spring me from jail. I need jail. to get a dog like that. My dog would not spring me from jail. No, your dog's My dog would be the reason I'm in jail. Probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's a menace to society. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She's still a good puppy, but, you know. Not yeah. that, just not not that, that good. good. Yeah, we yeah. say she's mediocre. Mediocre dog? She's a mediocre okay. dog. Yeah. We tell her all the mediocre time, you're such a mediocre pup. Pup. <laughs> You're adequate. Maybe that's why she's me. <laughs> you are a dog. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So when someone is arrested, it's not uncommon for a loved one to come down and pay bail or plead for their release. And such was the case when a Dominican man was taken into custody by police for violating curfew. By now, I'm sure you've realized, though, for him, it was a bit different. Of course this is about someone in the Caribbean. I love this. (laughs) His loved one was of the canine variety. As seen on a police Facebook video, I gotta find this video, the dog strolls in confidently and begs for its owner's release. (laughs) And it worked. (laughs) So There's a quote from the, the officer. You know why I'm going to let him go? Because anyone can come here. And that dog came and told me that man was his. And that's why I'm going to let him go. (laughs) Colonel Jose Francisco de la Cruz Mercedes of the Dominican police said, this is the first time I've handed over a prisoner to the dog. (laughs) The man, for his part, (laughs) reportedly promised to behave going forward. Oh, well, good job. You got to be a man that your dog is proud of. Absolutely. And you, that, that you, shows you have to that, live up to the dog. That shows that the dog is really training him well. Like, he messed up, yeah, but the dog believes in him so much that he went down there to get right. him. He becomes a better man because of the dog. Exactly. You don't get that with cats. No, you don't. No. Cats have their own perks, but it's not that. They don't make you better people. In fact, they probably make you worse people. Cats I will disagree. eat your face. If you die, they will eat you. Oh, like, my God. That's always the first thing people go to yeah, when it comes no, to cats. No, seriously. Like... <laughs> I was reading it. No, I was reading another article because I read articles online. Like a dog will exhaust all other like food options. It'll eat through furniture. It'll like it'll eat its own poop. It will find food throughout the house. It'll rummage. It'll do whatever it can before it goes for you. And then it'll start with the extremities. Yeah. If it has to. A cat will wait like a day. And eat your face. <laughs> it goes straight for the face. I respect that. My cat tries to eat my feet it doesn't, as I'm alive. It doesn't even wait like three days. Like the reason your cats are meowing at you at 3 a.m. to eat is they because wanna they're, eat. they they want to make sure you're still alive. <laughs> they're like, hey. This is your chance. Wake up now. If you're, if you're not alive, I'm going to eat that face. Those cheeks are looking mighty supple. <laughs> I respect them for that. You have to do what you have to do. But okay. they don't have to do that. <laughs> That's the thing. They don't know any better. Why would they eat a couch? They're not dogs. Dogs are gross. 
All right. Anyway, uh, as the proud owner of a new cat, we got a new cat, by the way. I don't know if I told. Yeah, you. messy. Yeah, I don't. I know I told Tim. I don't know if I told you, Harley. I just kind of found out from like Instagram. Oh, and Janelle. Okay. Oh, she's posted the cat on Instagram. Yeah, I'm not on so. Instagram. That's, I need to be on more social medias. I guess I don't know. Social Maybe media. read articles on Instagram than just the internet. There you go. They're not as educational. Have you tried Instagram poetry? It's awful. Mm. It Instagram is the, poetry? Oh, yeah. yeah. Instagram poetry. In- Look, I write I write and read poetry. That's my, my thing, my hobby. And Instagram poetry is like, if your hobby is chess, Instagram poetry is a six-card memory game. Oh. It's not even chess. Mm. It's like it's like twelve year old like high school. Not even. Oh. It it's bad, bro. Mm. It I'll show you some. I'll show you some. I'm okay. Oh, it, it's awful. I believe you. <laughs> Anyways. Last thing. Let's move on. Yeah, so those are all of our stories. Now we're just gonna real quick, rapid fire. Let's do this. No explanation. Our favorite animals of land, sea, and air. <laughs> Tim? Favorite sea animal? Orcas. They've quickly become my favorite. Dude, those things are awesome. They, they do so much fun. Like, and damage is great. It's the damage I like. Yeah. Drown mm. billions. Have, have you seen? Exactly. Like, they're taking down yachts and stuff? Come I'm, on, I'm now. all about it. I'm all about these guys. Become a, a problem money can't solve. Mm-hmm. I'm I think they're terrifying. They are terrifying, but... Yeah, right and now I respect we're on the same them, side. and I'll stay over here. Yeah, <laughs> right now we're on the same side. Harley, what's your favorite mm. sea animal? Sea lions. Sea oh, lions. fancy. They're what's, so cute. What's the difference between dogs. a sea lion and a seal? Uh, I don't know. Size, mostly. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. I think one looks more like this, like just dots, and the other one is more like smile, you know? No, I don't. Sea lion. Like one's- exhibit A. And look, even oh, he even has a picture. Oh, sea. comparison. Okay. Is it a seal or a sea lion? Ears. Ears. Body size. The sounds they make. Body size. See, I told Front you. flippers. Okay, I yeah. see it. I got it. Okay, now I'm tracking. Cool. Yeah. I think manatees are also pretty cool. Oh, those are cool. They just vibe. Manatees are cool. I want to be honest with you. My favorite sea animal, I think, is sharks. They're my mm. greatest fear. You are no, no, no. such hold a on, hypocrite here. No, 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 no. They're my greatest fear, and yet I respect them. I hate them, but I love them. <laughs> mm. you, you get me? You feel? Yeah, I get you. Just go to the beach with me, man. We'll see. <gasps> Your guys' job is beach. Beach? I yes. love that. My job is beach. <laughs> Oh, have you seen it now? Have you seen it? No. Oh. Uh, I don't even know what you're talking about. Me Harley. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Let's have a beach off. <laughs> what are we talking about? Barbie. Go see Barbie. Oh, yeah. No, I still haven't seen that. Uh, all right, next one. All right, so our favorite land animals. Cheetahs. Capybara. Oh, capybaras. Ooh. Capybara, 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 cap. Capybara, 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 capybara. They're so vibey. They just hang capybaras. out. <laughs> they're friends with like almost every animal ever. Yeah, they're pretty cool. I actually need to revise mine. My favorite sea animal is sea turtles. Oh, that's I good just to... remembered that those exist. <laughs> I, I had panicking. a feeling you were going to say that. I was originally. panicking, and then you didn't. <laughs> when we went to, when I was going over the things, I was panicking. I was like, I don't, I don't know. Who am I? What do I like? <laughs> uh, All yeah. right. Cheetahs are fast. I like them. They're cool. They're cool cats. Cheetahs are fast. <gasps> Capybaras cool vibe. Cat. I like foxes. Oh, and red pandas. Ah, you yeah. like what? I like foxes. Oh yeah, Fox foxes eye. are pretty good. Fo- foxes. 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 I think it's foxes. Foxes and lions. Those are my two. You favorites. ever seen the box face uh, fox? Car. Yes, I've seen every fox. You know, so you know what it looks like. Yes. Do you know where they live? No. Okay, I win. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Do you know the red panda is not actually a panda? Yes, it's a marsupial. Isn't it in the raccoon family or something? Oh, you're probably right. It's probably not that. Whatever. I think it is a marsupial. Let's so. find out. Red panda marsupial. I just ran panda. <laughs> what is a ran panda? 
<laughs> red panda. Uh, they are a mammal. Yes, I know they're a mammal. Mammalia. Yeah, I think they're in the raccoon family. Cordata, mammalia, carnivora, aluride, allurus. Um, Etymology, taxonomy. Taxonomy, that's one. Yeah. Uh, Only recognized species in the genus. That doesn't help. No, we're not scientists. We're not biologists here. Doesn't really matter. Favorite air animals. Peregrine falcon. Those things are the fastest animals ever. They, you know, they, they can cannot, dive to 200 miles per hour. Unlike hawks and eagles, you know, they can't grab their meals while flying. They can, but nope. it's just more its just more efficient they're, for them no. to punch it. Their claws are too weak. They can't do it. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like, they can. Like, they, they have the capabilities to, but it's not like they, they don't have good, like, big grip strength. So it's like they yeah, punch it, they and then they knock it out, and they come back for it. 200 miles an hour just... <laughs> bah, bah. <laughs> that's terrifying. Oh, and fun fact... Uh, because of like you know human you know horrible taking over everything, uh, they were like almost extinct for a while. But then when skyscrapers started coming up in New York City, they migrated back to New York City because they like to hunt from the skyscrapers. They like to go after like pigeons and stuff, and so they like nest. Could you hunt. imagine just like walking down the street eating a bagel? You can see that. And yes. peregrine falcon just like bam, <laughs> pigeon right in front of you. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah, they're cool. I like them. Harley, favorite air animal? Go. I don't think I have one because I don't like things flying around me. Yeah. Pick bats. If I had to pick one, it'd be, oh, bats are good. Yeah, probably bats. Bats are cute from a distance. They nobody, carry rabies. Nobody pick bats. Bats, bats deserve love. You yeah, that's that? a good. It's freaking yeah, bats. It's freaking bats. Love Halloween. It is that season. It is upon us. Spooky season. Yep. Spook. Janelle Spook. says spice up your life. Uh, mine is... Red tail hawks. So, there we go. Heck yeah. That's it. All right, guys. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back with one more thing. Well, a couple more things, but, you know, one more segment. We'll see you soon. Great people of the world, we are back. <laughs> I missed you guys. It's been, it's Did been, you miss me? It's been so long. No. I always miss you, Chris. I wasn't talking to you guys. I was talking to our <laughs> listeners. Oh. I know Mom Tim Bizzle. missed me. I always miss you. All right, guys. Well, thanks for sticking around. I found that main segment to be fun, entertaining, and got a little bit risque, risque. If, I, if I do say so myself. Yes. Risque. That hawk was just like... Risque. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'd probably instantly just, like, kill myself. <laughs> just, I would simply pass away. <laughs> yeah. I, <clears throat> I want right, nothing guys. to do with any of that. Before we wrap this up, we are going to do our fan questions. No! I forgot to turn the other one off! <laughs> I'm not editing this out. Here's our fan question music. <laughs> I'm too lazy, guys. It's Tuesday night as we're recording this. I ain't got time. We ain't got time for that. Fair enough. You edit it. No, thanks. Yeah. Fair enough. See, this is why if we ever monetize this thing, you're getting like 50% to yourself, (laughs) and then Harley and I are going to split the other 50. I don't even want that much. (laughs) Harley's like, I'm good with five. I don't want all that responsibility. (laughs) All right. So this is the part of the show where we answer your questions. So we have some questions here that don't have names on them, it's but all, that's it's fine. All, it's, all, it's all Shane. Oh, they're all from Shane? Yeah, they're all from Shane. Come on, guys. We need more questions. Shane, I appreciate you. Uh-oh. I know you can't see the video, but I appreciate you. We appreciate you. Harley just disappeared, and that's really weird. Are you still there audibly? Do we keep talking, and does she come back? What happens here? Oh, no. We lost Harley. Oh, man. She's going to make me edit. Yep. You might want to look at the time. Figure out what time you need to edit. No, it's quick. I don't have to edit. She's back. She's back. Three, two, one. Hey. There she is. Where'd you go, Harley? I had two tabs open for Zoom, <laughs> and I was like, why she is this extra one, one open? <laughs> <laughs> and so I wish I click X out of it, and it was like, leave meeting. And I was like, 
but this isn't the same tab as the one I'm currently on. And so I was like, screw it. I'll just leave the meeting. <laughs> Keep going. I'm so sorry. So this happens to me sometimes in real life. I have tabs open in my mind and I close the wrong one and then I glitch. I think that's what's been happening to Mitch McConnell. Oh! <laughs> Oh, Either that no. or he's falling into the icy grip of death. <laughs> hoping, I, hoping for the second one. I <laughs> Anyways. Love, I love, is it, is it Family Guy or, yeah, where like the guy, like he, he's like typing and death is sitting behind there on like a chair reading a newspaper and he's like typing and he just stops and the death pulls out the newspaper. Yes. <laughs> death looks up from the newspaper yeah. and then he keeps going and goes back to the newspaper. <laughs> I don't even know who that is, but yeah, I love it. All right. So, first question from Shane is, favorite way to cook potatoes? Did we do this one? I don't think I so. I think we did do this one. Well, d- potatoes deserve another one. Fries. I mean, come on. Fry them. Scalloped. Oh, mashed. So many great things to do with potatoes. Roasted. What a, what a gift to humanity. That's like, oh my God, have you seen? <laughs> Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. No, there's this other podcast and it's from, um, what to call it? It's this one dude that I used to watch on YouTube, like way back when, and his name is Joe Sanagato. And do you, anybody? Nope, no. Nope, okay. Nope, a, well, him and his bestie Frankie have their own podcast and it's called the, the basement or something oh, like that. Oh, I'm, I am aware of them. And yeah. they made this one where it was like a similar question. And it was like, what's your favorite kind of potato or something like that? And then he, oh, I know what you're talking about now. Yes. And he's like, I love a good Russell potato. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> and then Joe is like, what? <laughs> I'm not asking you about your favorite sp- your favorite species genus <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> potato how do you like it cooked <laughs> that is a goal in life just to be like someone asks you a random question about something so simple and you're able to give them just the most incredibly scientific detailed answer oh ever. i do that all the time I, that's a goal like that's just something i need it's to so like, fun i need to prepare myself better for <laughs> when people ask questions that are like oh what do you think about this and you could just rattle off an answer whether you actually think that or not like <laughs> it's my favorite i do that all the time it's the best He's the best. He's the best. Yes. But yeah, that's what that question reminds me of. I love that podcast, though, by the way. I love a good, what is it? Russ, um, Russet? No, no. The, what are the tiny reds? <laughs> tiny baby reds? reds? <laughs> I don't I, know. I think I they're know. literally called baby reds. I don't know. The little tiny potatoes. Janelle will know. She's yelling at us right now what it is, and I, I can't Sorry, tell you. No. Janelle, I hope I'm right. I think it's, I think it's a baby. She's going to text you and be like, you're wrong. I want my baby back, baby back, baby back. Ribs. Sorry. <laughs> I see where you're going with that. Uh, that was the thing on Scrubs. What? They tied, uh, I think it was Kelso to a chair to get him to approve something. Oh, and they, they put Ted's uh, acapella yes. group in the room and they were like, all right, boys, get them. <laughs> I want my baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back, baby back. I want my baby back. And they never stop. When do they say ribs? They don't. (laughs) They never say ribs. (laughs) They close the door. You just hear them screaming. No. Oh, good stuff. All right. Next question. If you were a plant, what plant would you be? Mm. I think we did this one too. We did. No. Venus flytrap. Yeah. Oh. I feel like there's maybe more questions that I forgot to switch out here. Maybe that's what it happened be. here. Yeah, I think you just picked the the same the ones. ones. Did we just? I know, yeah. I know this last one we didn't do. Okay, well let's do the last one then. Okay, I'm sorry guys, this is so unprofessional, but Come I don't care. Too. Messing up rotation. All right, last question: <laughs> If you were a fish, would you be a saltwater fish or a freshwater fish? Please explain. Um. Hmm. You know, on one hand, like I'm trying to think about whatever is the least deadliest, but I don't know. What do you mean, least deadliest? Like where do you have the better chance to survive? survive Yeah, like like the ocean. It kind of like it's a pretty big place, but also in a lake, you're kind of trapped. So, you know, if there is a bigger fish in that lake with you, then I mean, could I choose the lake? Huh? 
Could I choose the Can lake? You choose which lake you're in. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, that's a good point. But like, that's my point though. Is like, it, it depends on what lake you're in, and I guess what ocean or what part of the ocean you're in. Like, I would be in the Great Lakes, like up by Michigan and stuff in Canada. Yeah, I would be there. Oh, okay, whatever. So, okay. I've I've two two choices, and I don't know which one I want more. <laughs> Because my first instinct is to say salt water, and I would live on the beaches of Rotan. Yeah. And you would die. No, no, I'd be fine there. The beaches of Rotan. Oh. Yeah, those, gotta, those are like pristine. You gotta beaches. find like nice, like coral reef. That's what you need to find. There's a coral yeah, reef well, there. It's the second you? largest coral reef in the world. Mm. It Won't depends. They eat you. It depends on the type of fish I am. Mm. But also, I'm a piranha. <laughs> but also. I could be whatever type of fish lives in Loch Ness. Oh. And I could hang out with Nessie. Well, that is true. But at the mm. same time, Nessie probably eats fish. Mm. But I would know for sure. Is that knowledge worth it? You could be a shark. Huh? A shark? A shark's fish? No. They're invertebrates. See, that's the thing about the ocean. It really is like, I mean, I know that's all like the animal kingdom, but like in the ocean, it's like really rough. Like, I would never go more than 15 feet from shore. Like, <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. my, that's my zone right Every, there. Everything is really, I think that's too far. Everything is out there to eat you. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm not lapping up on the shore 15, in the waves. <laughs> 15 feet too deep. Okay. This is wrong. I'm not saying 15 feet deep. I'm saying 15 feet horizontally from the shore. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Too far. Too deep, too far. <laughs> All of the above. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I probably, probably. I, I'd be if, a saltwater fish. If I could, I mean, I'm trying to think of like any animal that doesn't really have any prey or like is not a predator. It's, like doesn't have um, a predator that hunts it. The only thing that you have is sharks, but like. Humans? <laughs> I mean like in the ocean though. Oh, in the ocean? Whale sharks. Orcas. Yeah, okay, I'll give you one of those. Yeah. The Meg. So salt, so salt water, I guess. Great whites. I wish I could be the capybaras of the sea. You know what? That is my answer. I nice. I would be a I would totally be a blue whale. Those guys got like, like They just vibe. They just vibe. They oh, they travel yeah. around. They travel literally the whole span of the Pacific. Yeah. A blue whale. That's true. I mean they're dying in That's record numbers answer. right now, but Oh well, yeah, Chris, but come on. And some of them Why are showing up that? on shore with like giant bite marks taken out of them. It's causing concern that there might actually be a Meg out there. Sometimes I, want my I hate baby 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 baby. Baby. to be. Every time I say something Just fun, let, let me, you make it not that way. Let me have my moment, Chris. <laughs> I hate. So much about the things you choose to be. Harley, you would know this if you'd watch The Office. I would be a goldfish. <laughs> <laughs> then you have to worry about other goldfish. You could be a beta. I'd be a koi fish. Oh, koi fish. They're pretty chill. Are they salt or Te fresh? They're fresh, but technically those are goldfish. They're just... Yeah. Yeah, they're just huge. Or, and they just or vibe. Or goldfish koi. I don't know. We're making a lot of claims on this podcast today. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fact check anything we've said today. Red pandas are marsupials. <laughs> <laughs> I never looked that up, actually. <laughs> are red pandas marsupials? I don't think they are. What's a marsupial? It's uh, a, is that the ones who like lay eggs? Pouch. Oh, koalas are marsupials. Hold on, here we go. Wallabies. Wallabies are marsupials. They're they tiny not kangaroos. Red pandas are not marsupials. <laughs> <laughs> marsupials are animals that give birth to extremely underdeveloped young, which then crawl to the mother's pouch where they fully develop. Ugh. Whoa. I want to know what happened in that. evolution to cause that. Hmm. Like, Don't know. Don't want to find out. How was that a successful feature of being I mean, have an you seen a kangaroo? Yeah, but it they works out in their also favor. just like... Given birth to yeah. small kangaroos, like, and they just grow. I imagine the mother would die. It's like sloths. Like, like what happened? How, hap how did you become the way you are? Right, right. Well, what what happened in the world, in your environment? 
what made you in, in, in multiple parts of the earth? Like, how did this happen? Like, what happened here? Because <laughs> it, it's not just in like South <laughs> right. America. It's like it's in multiple places. Mm-hmm. Did it happen before Pangea? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. No, that's dinosaur era, dude. This got to be after. I don't know. They're kind of dinosaurish. Happened. Sloths. Yeah, you seen those. Talons, the giant three toed. You you guys do know that sloth. there were such thing as giant sloths, right? Like yeah. they they were like yes. these huge ass. They things. were giant. Yeah. yeah. Uh, fun fact: that's how maybe, mangoes. Oh, or not maybe mangoes, that's why um, they move so slow. Avocados. Uh, avocados uh, were like they they evolved to be eaten by giant sloths. Hence the huge ass seeds in the middle, and like they would go through the system of the giant sloth, and they would be planted. So like the only way for um, um, uh, avocados to be like like reproduced and like naturally is for us to do it for them. Like we have to plant them and figure that out. Well, or we could just eat that. the seeds whole and poop them out. I mean, I'm, are you pooping out? In nature Good luck these days. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> no more than usual. <laughs> it depends on the day. <laughs> just carry my shovel with me, you know, dig a hole. You don't. <laughs> Find an open field, dig a hole, you know, <laughs> as one does. The huge. Per huge. This is kind of the part of the show when Harley kind of just blanks out because me and Chris are talking about stupid boys. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I just start like staring at things. <laughs> I was, wow. That wall is made out they're of just walls. Like, <laughs> they're just like radiating. Bring us back, Harley. Bring us back. <laughs> This is why you're here, to pull us out of this. We were talking about salt water for, versus fresh water. That's how <laughs> yeah, we got here. Yeah, we're talking <laughs> like, about pooping out in the forest. I don't even know how we got to where we are. <laughs> it's because thought. of the way you are. If, if you would have told me at the beginning of this episode that we'd be talking about, like, bears that, uh, you know, carry artillery shells and... Uh, uh, you got uh, you got the hawks flying in and you got dogs breaking people out of prison and and uh, and now now Chris out hey. pooping in the forest I, who if they would have asked me if I would have thought about all that no he didn't no. break anyone out of prison he bailed him out he asked politely he did ask that's true he was a good dog he's a great dog all yeah, right guys. I did not think this is how my Tuesday was gonna go <laughs> Well, you forgot we were doing this at all. So. I did. I sure <laughs> did. Gone. All right, guys. Final thoughts. Um, animals are cool. <laughs> animals are cool. That's all I got. Um. Tim. Um. For a second, um, I thought it was Harley, and then I looked over, and it was you. <laughs> I was like, ah, is not the mouth I expected that sound to come out of. <laughs> I'm a little delirious tonight. We're very tired. I think I'm realizing that I'm going to edit this too afterwards before tonight's over. And I got worked in the morning, so this is going to be great. I'm so sorry. It's all right. I do it for you guys because I love you. If you're hearing my voice, I love you. If you're hearing my voice, I probably love you. I can't guarantee it, but probably. Your cat just ate a cricket. Good girl. Eat all the bugs. I don't even know how it got in here. Yeah. It's not cricket season. Animals are cool. That's my final my final thought. Um, st- respect it. Stay away from yeah. s- stay away from dangerous ones. And um, guys, we're deforcing, you know, big force, so let's stop doing that. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> Protect the animals' habitats, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> It's don't related. forget. <laughs> don't forget to spay and neuter your pets. <laughs> that's that's what I got out of this episode. <laughs> we miss you, Bob Barker. <laughs> he got what as is close. Happening? He got as close to a hundred as he could without going over. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because that was the game. <laughs> All right, before Tim dies of asthma, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and finish this episode out, guys. So, thank you and all again peace, for Steve listening. Irwin. Yeah, rip <gasps> Steve, Steve Irwin, Irwin, for real. He died on my birthday, by the way. I don't know if you knew that. I did not know that. So oh. he, he died yesterday. I mean, like, years ago. But years it was ago. On my birthday. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, years ago. 
<laughs> God, Tim. Steve Irwin died yesterday. <laughs> R.I.P. Steve Irwin and Bob Barker. And Thank Jimmy you all again Buffett. for listening to our podcast. Be sure to subscribe and leave a rating on your favorite podcast platform. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook at Always More Pod. Tim, where are you at? You can find me on Instagram, TikTok, and pretty much everything else at Timothy Lichty. That's L I E C H T Y. Harley. I am on Instagram at what Harley, W U T Harley, and on the clock app at harleybean.co. And I'm on Instagram occasionally as Captain underscore CT Ford and on TikTok as Christopher dot Lionheart. Thanks again for listening and for being a part of the conversation. And remember, there is always more than this. Bye. Bye.